So over the years, my live looping setup has constantly been evolving. I've used the RC300 as an independent looper. I've used the RC300 with a mixer desk to expand the input. And I've just recently upgraded to the RC505 and started using it with Ableton Live. Now, although my brand new rig is the best rig I've ever had and it's allowed me to do way more than ever before when it comes to live looping, I still do offer a chilled acoustic live looping set for like weddings and parties and things like that. So because summer is now over and the weddings are on the downturn, I thought I'd take this opportunity to upgrade my Boss RC300 setup. So I've modified the RC300 pedal board air freight case from Toman. Now, what I've added is a shelf. I've built this little wooden shelf and I've put it in the back a bit so it just sits above the inputs and by the looper station. Works okay. I could have gone a little bit bigger with it and filled the whole space, but I only was going to put a couple of pedals on and I'm definitely not going to be adding any in the future. So it was good enough with the bits and bobs I had lying about. So how I've laid it out is I've added a tuner pedal. Main reason is, yes, my acoustic guitar does have a tuner in, but it's just awkward. You have to like click the button in and you're looking down, trying to tune and you know, you've got a double chin and everything and people are like, oh, it's, you just don't look cool tuning it. So I went for a pedal instead and I can see it a bit better with my terrible eyes on the stage. I've then also got um, an EQ. Now the EQ has elevated this whole rig because on my new rig, my RC505 rig, I run that with Ableton and I've gotten used to having so much control over the EQs and really refining it and crafting the sound. When I use my acoustic guitar on this rig, it sounds huge when I hit it for the kick drum on the guitar and doing beats. And when I went back to my RC300 and even like trying to run a mixer through, I just couldn't replicate and emulate this. So by getting this EQ pedal, it's allowed me to just switch it on and then I toggle to a huge bassy guitar sound and then I switch it off and I'm back to my regular acoustic guitar. So one of the major benefits of running the EQ pedal, I get two acoustic guitar tones. So obviously I'm gonna get my natural acoustic guitar tone of it just running through the loop station and to front of house. But then when I engage the EQ pedal, I'll get a more bass heavy sound. So that means when I do my drum beats, I'll have greater presence. And then when I switch the pedal off and go back to my natural unaffected sound, that will then have less bass in the mix. So the guitar tones will complement each other and sit on top of each other much nicer. So this means the loops will have much greater clarity. Now, one thing you have to bear in mind, if you're just running your acoustic guitar straight into the looper, you have to make up for the bass at the front of house end. Now, the problem with doing it at the front of house end is the whole loop station is manipulated by whatever's done on that signal. Now, obviously, if you're just running an acoustic guitar, it's not really an issue. But if you're running vocals into the looper, maybe a piano into the looper, whatever you're doing, that means all of that stuff coming out of the loop pedal is going to be really bass heavy because you're trying to make up for the bass that's not there on the acoustic guitar. Because obviously the acoustic guitar was not designed to do drum beats on and it sounds relatively terrible uh, if it's not manipulated correctly. It just sounds a bit... Poof, poof. Now I've seen a lot of stuff online of people building these RC300 live looper pedal boards. Now a word of advice. Just keep it super duper simple. Now I know that's ironic coming from a guy with the world's most complicated live looping setup behind me here, but with the RC300, just keep it simple. I see all these people like, oh, I'm rocking this incredible preamp. It's the world's best acoustic guitar preamp. It's studio grade this, studio grade that. It's totally pointless, that's what it is, because the RC300 can only output MP3 audio. So you could be inputting the world's best signal chain ever, but it's just totally bottlenecked by the MP3 coming out the output. Now I know this because I rock the Kemper Profiler and when I was running it through the RC300, I had the world's best guitar tone, but then the second it came through the output, it was the world's most mediocre guitar tone. So I'm gonna be adding the Pog pedal to this setup. So the Pog pedal is a polyphonic octave pedal, it does octave up and octave down. Now it does a great job of doing the octave down. Now I've used this pedal quite a lot in the past. It's been on and off my board constantly throughout the years. But finally, I'm gonna add it back on, mainly because I've become so used to my loops having bass in them because I use the Nord on my big rig. Um, I, I want that presence on this setup as well. So I don't really have any other choice other than the Pog 
because I don't really want to be whacking out a massive keyboard when I'm gigging about because this whole point of this setup is to be quick and convenient. It's also going to make your guitar sound like a 12 string. Now, depending on what you think a 12 string is, if somebody said to me, this is how a 12 string sounds and I'd never heard one ever in my life and they played it with the POG, I would definitely not be going out to buy a 12 string guitar. I think it's a bit of a fad, to be honest, that setting. It's not the best thing I've ever heard. It also makes your guitar sound like an organ. Now, I, I, I don't see again how you can ever, ever use this other than if you're in your bedroom, like doing some random stuff. Comment below what you thought of the 12 string setting on the POG. Is it a yay or is it a nay? Let me know. So the way I've decided to power this rig is everything's running off like a pedal board power brick. So I've got just one power outlet now. It's nice and clean, the power, and it's just one plug. Now this is great because when you're playing at like a wedding and parties, things like that, you're surrounded by drunk people and they're having a great time. I don't mind that, but I'm coming in with all this gear and it's a bit of a pain to try and set stuff up because they're knocking into you. So you just want least stuff to carry in and as quick as possible to get in and out. That's my main issue with this big rig. Like it's great, I can do way more with it, but when you're playing like a party environment, it's sometimes a bit difficult to get it in and out. It's perfect if you're doing like a support slot because usually um, it's a staged event. So you have your own entrance and exit to the crowd and stuff and the public. So it works fine for stuff like that. But for my party rig, which is my RC300, my Agadu um, setup, I just want it to be in and out quick as possible. So there are all the pedals that I'm going to be adding to my RC300 setup. As I said, keeping it dead simple. Now you could add all sorts of fancy reverbs and delays if you've got them, ones with MIDI capability. You could MIDI sync them with the RC300 so it's all in time with each other. But I'm not gonna do anything like that because I don't really do any ambient type of guitar playing. I don't really like it. I think it meanders on a little bit and kind of goes nowhere. And I just like to play a song people like to hear a song and singing and all that sort of stuff. So I'm just keeping it simple and that's all I need on my RC300 setup. If you found some value from today's video, please consider leaving a like and a subscribe. It's all about live looping on my channel. I upload live looping tutorials, live looping performances every Tuesday and every Thursday. So make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video. I've been Ben Rollins. You can find me online at benrollinsmusic.com. If you want to learn more about live looping, check out this video here and I'll see you in the next one.